This is a semi-busy supercharger station. And of course, here's us parked like jerks across two places. Hey guys, I'm excited to test this Equinox EV. We're gonna do a 10%, 15 minute charge stop from 10% to however much we can get. And then we're gonna jump on the highway at 120 kilometers per hour and see how far we can make it. I'm very excited. This Equinox has an 85 kilowatt hour battery and a peak of 150 kilowatts. 150 kilowatt peak, however, you need a high amperage charger to get there. So if you go to a regular 150 kilowatt charger, you're probably only going to get around 100 kilowatts because the, the pack voltage on this car is actually very, very low. It's around 288 volts or so. So when you multiply those 288 volts by uh, like a 300 amp limit of a typical CCS charging station, you're just not going to get a very high peak. But this Tesla supercharger is open to non-Tesla EVs, which is perfect because Tesla superchargers can go all the way up to like 600, 675 amps. So that's going to give us enough juice to boost this guy up to hopefully that 150 kilowatt peak we're looking for. Uh, we're just going to activate it now. We arrived with 10% preconditioned, so we should see the peak. And then afterwards, we're going to jump on the highway and do the test. This car is riding on 21 inch wheels, which is not ideal for the top range spec, but it is the single motor front wheel drive car. Uh, so let's plug in and start charging. I'm gonna time 15 minutes on the charger. We're gonna see how much energy we can add to the car. We're gonna, and then we're gonna see how far we can go. Um, previously, I just did this with the Hyundai Kona electric that did 114 kilometers, 70 miles on the highway at 120 kilometers per hour. My own Tesla Model Y did 160 kilometers, so that's about 100 miles. My guess is this is gonna be somewhere in between maybe 130 kilometers. Uh, it's a bit chilly, it's nighttime. It's also, we, had, we have to kind of park like jerks, occupying two spaces because V3 supercharger cables are so short and the charging port location is in a very dumb spot. It's in the front driver's side, kind of away from the bumper. This is literally quite a stretch to make this work. Um, come have a look. So let's go activate now. Oh, here we go. Starting session. Well, this is exciting. We just plugged into this V3 supercharger. We're getting 148 kilowatts. That's amazing. That's basically as good as we're gonna get with this vehicle. 13% right now. It's been just over a minute. So we'll keep you posted on the progress. And at 15 minutes, we're gonna stop charging and head on over to the highway. 20% update. So it took about four minutes to go from 10 to 20, 152 kilowatts, still chugging along. 30, 31%, 147 kilowatts, still just about eight minutes. We're over halfway done. This is very exciting. So the, the peak is not that high, 150 kilowatts but it seems to be pretty flat so far. This is a semi-busy supercharger station. And of course, here's us parked like jerks across two places. Uh, we, we came here at night because it's gonna be less busy on the highway, less busy at the chargers, and also the rates are better at nighttime, which is amazing. Um, so this, this car is riding on 21 inch wheels, which is maybe not ideal for range. Continental tires, these are actually pretty wide. I think they're 275s width section. So definitely if you want more range, you want the other 19 inch wheels with 245 section tires. And this is of course how stretched this cable is. I, re I literally had no more space, maybe, in, maybe two more inches of clearance. And this door is right in the way of the cable. So not ideal. Definitely looking forward to V4 superchargers with longer cables. Charging update, right around 35%. We came off the peak, so we're clearly at uh, 123 kilowatts now. So that's when you can expect for the speeds to start tapering down. Here we are at 40%. It took just about 12 and a half or so minutes. We're charging still at 122 kilowatts, which is not too bad. And as a reminder for this test, we're gonna run climate at around 21 degrees Celsius manually on low just for comfort uh, just like in the other tests 
and we're getting ready to unplug relatively soon and then we can get going. It looks like we're just going to be in the high 40% state of charge range when this is completed. And stop, stop charging. There we go. So just as you saw, we, we hit stop right immediately at 15 minutes. I stopped the session from the Tesla app. Cable's not hot at all. This is the adapter that I used. This is not the official adapter. This is from a company called Lens. This is rated to 500 amps, which is what this car needs. And it's not even warm. That's awesome. All right, let's stop occupying two spaces and hit the highway. Let's roll out. So this car, even though I have one pedal driving enabled, when you stick it in reverse, it creeps backwards. But then it doesn't apply to D. In D, we're still one pedal driving. We just reset the trip odometer before we started moving. The highway is just behind that intersection. We're gonna jump on and cruise at 120 kilometers per hour and see how far we can make it. So uh, we, may, we charged from 10% to 45% in this pack in 15 minutes. That means, well, we added 35%. So we got to turn around after we deplete 17% or so. We got on the highway. We're going with traffic, but we're not getting in anyone's way. Our speedometer is exactly 120 kilometers per hour, just like we wanted. And I double checked before setting off that 120, 120 speedometer is the same as 120 GPS. So we, we don't have to make any adjustments here. So let's just uh, pile on the kilometers, the miles, and see how far it goes. So at 39%, we have we covered 25 kilometers so we've spent six seven percent so far and we have how many just around 11 percent more to go until the turnaround point so let's see we'll keep you updated still rolling beautiful sunset in the background over here smooth drive no traffic now to bring it home We've just about hit 50 kilometers and we're at 31%. So we still have 4% left to go before we turn around. I think this is gonna be a pretty good result. So this is kind of funny. This thing here is the volume knob. And at nighttime, it looks like a donut floating on your screen. We made it off the highway, uh, 67 kilometers, and then we regenerated capture to capture energy. Now we're gonna go just behind that bridge is the on-ramp to go back. For the Canadians watching, we made it from north of Toronto to just north of Barrie on half of our charge. And this is a nice Ford F-150 Lightning next to us. And we're at 18%, 107 kilometers covered. So we just have about 8% to go. I'm guessing we're gonna end up with something like 130, maybe 135 kilometers. If that's the case, that's a pretty good result, I think. Uh, here we go. We just hit 10% in our challenge. What's the odometer? 139.9. Let's call it 140 even. This is a really good result. Uh, I'm actually impressed. I thought it was going to be maybe 130, but I think our second half, second leg of the trip was more efficient. This is 4.2 kilowatt hours for the whole trip. Uh, so that's why we actually went a little bit past our starting point, but I don't think the elevation here is going to matter all that much. So yeah, let's uh, go back, get off the highway and wrap up this video. We just finished our 10% 15 minute charging stop test and this Equinox EV covered 140 kilometers at 120 kilometers per hour. Really impressive result. I thought this car might suffer from having a really low voltage battery pack at 288 volts or so. 
Uh, but honestly, if you could find charging stations like the supercharger station that can give you 500 amps, you're gonna hit that peak and it's gonna hold that charge pretty well. So we averaged about 4.2 kilometers for every kilowatt hour. That results in 238 watt hours per kilometer. So it is a little bit thirstier than some of the competitors perhaps, but that might be down to the choice of tire and wheel. These are 21 inch wheels. I think if you go for the base LT trims with the 19 inch aero wheels and the narrower tires, I think you're gonna get an even better result. So I think this is actually a really good road tripping vehicle. Could be better, but for the value, this is great. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.